Container fields are one of the most unique features in the Claris FileMaker platform, and they're an important tool for any FileMaker Pro app in which you want to store or display more than just text, numbers, dates, and times. Container fields in FileMaker Pro can hold binary data in these classes, images, video or audio, and documents. In this video, we will explore storing documents in your FileMaker apps. Like other field types, you can add container fields to your tables, either under the Manage Database dialog, or even if you're in Table View, or using the Field Picker. Creating a container field is just like creating any other field, but you'll need to select Container as the data type. And when you add the fields to your layout, you may notice that they look a little bit different than other fields in layout mode, but you'll be able to work with these fields in the same way that you would any other data type. And in browse mode, there are a couple of ways of entering data into a container field, either manually or through a script. And if you're inserting a file manually, once you have the container field in focus, you can select the insert menu. Here you'll see that you have the option to insert either a picture or a file. And we will look at those other grayed out options in just a moment. But choosing insert file opens a window allowing you to select the file from your computer. You'll also notice at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you'll see that you have options for store only a reference to the file or to compress a file. When a user inserts a file and specifies the store only a reference to the file option, FileMaker Pro doesn't import the file. It only keeps track of where the file is on your hard disk. This option may reduce the size of your FileMaker Pro file because you don't have to embed the document, but if you move or delete the reference file, the file won't be displayed. And in case of compress, you can choose this option for larger files. Now, if you select a Word document, for example, and hit insert, you will see the file type icon and the name of the file, along with the file extension inside your container field. The same would be true if you selected insert file and chose a PDF, for example. However, PDFs can be viewed in another way. For each instance of a container field on a layout, you may also specify whether a container field is formatted to optimize for images, which is static content, and it's also the default, or for interactive content, such as movies, audio files, and PDF. You'll find that option in the inspector, on the data tab, on the bottom section called data formatting. You'll notice by default, a new container field placed on a FileMaker layout is optimized for images. But let's choose interactive content and go back into browse mode. And with the container field in focus, we'll go back to the insert menu and we'll now see that we have different options. Now, if you insert a PDF, you see that the PDF not only displays, but has scroll bars providing your users full preview capabilities. And now the contextual menu that your users can invoke by right clicking will have additional options. It'll even allow them to be able to select text from within your PDF. And the only difference in behavior is that when you choose to optimize for interactive content, you'll have to use the cut option to remove files from the container. Users are also able to insert files directly into a container field by dragging the file onto the field. Or if you want to automate this process and cut down on user training, you can use FileMaker's one-click automation to script the insertion of a file into a container. For example, say that you want to have a button on your layout and you want the user to select the button to be able to insert a file into the container. If you choose the action single step or even perform script, you can then use the insert file script step. And here you'll have options to choose which field you want to enter the file into when the user clicks the button, as well as all sorts of options that allow you to control the dialog that appears when they select the button, including things like restricting certain file types, choosing your storage options, and even compression. Once you have this button set up and on the layout, and the users can simply click on the button to initiate the entire process. And once you have data stored in a container, users can export the contents of the field by simply right-clicking into the field 
and choosing the Export Field Contents option from the contextual menu. This allows them to not only name the file that they want to export, choose the location of the file, but also they can choose to automatically open the file, which will open it in its native application, or create an email with the file as an attachment for easy sharing. Or if you'd also like to make this a one-step process, there's also a supported script step that you can either use to assign as a single step against a button or make the script step part of your script. The export field contents lets you choose which container field on the layout you want to export from, and you can even specify the output file or leave it blank to allow your user to specify the location and file name of the exported file. Now, when your users click on the button, it initiates the entire process, still allowing them to choose automatically open file or create email, or you could add those in as settings in the script step when you configure it. With all the additional functionality that container fields bring to the Claris FileMaker platform, you can easily create powerful document management solutions without the need for sophisticated programming.